Back to your corner. Tom Taylor giving final instructions. Mark Castro going for his sixth knockout in his many pro fights. Against Julio Madera. Madera in the black and gray trunks. And Mark Castro in the silver and black. And Madera comes out swinging. Word on the street is this Madera is one tough cookie. Not coming here to lay over. He's just 23. Only started boxing when he was 18. And received notice of his fight about a month ago, but looks the part. Looks the part. Let's see if he can fight the part. His last fight came back in August. This is his first U.S. fight of his brief pro career. All of his other fights have been in Mexico, and he lands a nice combo there on Castro. Nice jab, right uppercut that landed. Split the guard, Castro. And he's forcing Castro to swing here in the opening round. So we already see this is this is um, competitive right off the bat. And that's what you want to see in a young fighter like Castro. You don't want him just blowing guys out. He needs some competition. I'd be remiss to mention, this is at 135. Uh, a bunch of Mark's uh, prior fights were at 130. They're trying to see how he does against bigger opponents. I'd like we go back down to 130, but here he is just trying to gain more experience against a, a bigger opponent. He looks good at this weight to me. I mean, he, lo he looks the part, he looks the size, and he's bigger than his opponent. So that's a, that's a good sign. Oh. Good shot from Castro. Madera countering. Yeah, Madero came, Madero came right back with that left hook. Caught Mark on the chin. Pretty good action here in the opening bout, opening round of our third bout. This is scheduled for six. Ooh, Castro's fourth straight match scheduled for six rounds. Left uppercut coming inside for Madera. Castro coming back with a right hand. Oh, good right hand there from Castro. He's timing that tick-tock motion of Madera as he goes left and right. We got another one. And the jab landing. Solid four-punch combo from Castro. Some landing. Madera doing a good job keeping that guard tight. Because with Mark, you don't know where those punches are coming from all the time. I think Madeira also is doing well by establishing that jab and just keeping that jab in his face, keeping Castro guessing. Neither one is backing down, as you can see. Round yeah, one. No, they're fighting right in the center of the ring. Solid right hand. Coming in, crushing Madeira. Final 10 seconds. Listen for the bell, gentlemen. We're flowing first round. Very good opening round. Madera certainly presenting something different for Castro as a pro. Pretty much action from bell to bell in that first round. Madera was okay with stepping in the center of the ring and exchanging with Castro those three minutes. Castro doing a good job fighting from the outside, using his jab, setting up that right hand right over the top there. Alicia, what is it like when you are maybe starting off a fight expecting a, a get-to-know-you round and your opponent comes bull rushing? You know, that makes me know that I have to stay on my toes. I have to stay alert because one of those punches can definitely sneak in and it could be a knockdown. So you have to be alert when, when a fighter's coming at you um, and coming forward like that. And then also not to gas yourself out because, you know, he's coming forward. So, again, still understand that we have five more rounds to go. Excellent point. A lot of times these young fighters can get excited, kind of shoot their wad early. Mark Catrup, the silver trunks with the black trim, trying to begin what he hopes is a very active year on a high note. Madera with the black trunks and gray trim. I like what I'm seeing from Castro here. He's, he's shifted his style now to fighting behind the jab. We haven't seen much of that yet in his early career because he catches guys so early. But now he's got someone in front of him who's solid, who's coming forward, who's punching back. Oh! 
and Castro goes down. And I don't think that was a flash knockout, Chris. No, that was a hard left hook to the chin of Castro as he was throwing his own punches. Oh, man. Here comes Madera. This could be his one and only chance. He's going to try and take advantage. Good hold. Yes, yes. A lot of young fighters do not know how to clinch. Clinching is not illegal. Excessive clinching is. Fighters need to know how to do that, especially when they're hurt. Adversity for the first time as a pro for Mark Castro. Another left hook eaten up by Castro and Madera is lead, landing clean shots here in round two yeah, he's not seeing that left hook coming from Madera blood from the nose of Castro again this is when you get on your bicycle and you start jabbing you know kind of you know separating your distance from him just to gather himself right Castro's doing that pretty well he's staying long and now Salo oh. Combo's coming to Castro, eats another one. Off the heels of a three-punch combo and a good left hook. Thrown by Castro, he comes back with a counter, does Madera, and Madera with that left hand, continuing to find a home right now. Madera doing a very good job of punching short in between the shots of Castro. Catching the punches that he's just not seeing. And also give Madera credit for taking the shots. He's got hit with some big punches as well. One thing about Madera, he's keeping his rhythm, and I like that. Um, that that's important in boxing to keep your rhythm. 30 seconds to go. Three-punch combo from Castro. Connects with a jab. Ooh. And a right hand from Castro. Madera continuing to work. Big shots from Castro. I think Castro needs to be mindful to make sure he brings his punches back to his guard position. He seems to be getting hit right after he punches. I agree. And kind of step back on that, that back leg, right? I feel like he's leaning forward a little bit, getting hit with more jabs than necessary. Yeah, he's, he's, he's so used to being so aggressive, he's a little bit over his front foot, allowing Madera to land shots exactly. just like that. Huge left hook. There's another look. Yeah. It floors Castro. That's the worst way to get hit with a left hook when you're trading shots. Hey. Furious exchange there. Second round. Castro had to dig deep, come back from some adversity. Listen, I'm going, I'm going to establish my jab coming out this round. Let me take a breather. Let me establish my jab again, collect myself. Because, again, he's coming forward, so you, you're going to have to break up his rhythm, throw some face in there or something. you got to do something. The confidence is up for Madero, that's for sure. Julio Madera gaining a belief, perhaps, as he comes out for round three, recording the second-round knockdown against Mark Castro. This is scheduled for six at 135 pounds. Castro's catching Madera as well, but Madera just seems to be taking the punches better. Beautiful combination from Castro. That was six quick punches from Castro. The majority landed. All set up by the jab. He has the length advantage. He's got a little bit of size advantage. He's got a better jab. He needs to use it. Alicia, I think Castro heard you. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's a lot, a lot more calmer this round. And, and that's important, too, to collect yourself. You know, we have six rounds. But then again, be smart. And again, keep establishing that jab. Get, you know, collect those points. It can be tough for young fighters that kind of took that ego away. You want to get that back right away. Absolutely. Patience, right? Patience. That's the beautiful thing about the pros. You have more rounds. You have more time. Jabs, overharking right hand, moment to go from Castro. The 
pace of Badera slowing down just a tad here in round three. You know, Castro having a big amateur um, background and coming into the pros, this, this is a good fight for him. This is, a, this is allowing him to see what adjustments he has to make in the ring um, right now. Absolutely. Young fighters need fights like this. You need to be able to dig deep. Because a lot of times you don't know. You haven't been there. You're not sure what you got. And again, you know, the pro the pro ring's just showing a different look than amateur, and, and it, it helps. Much better round for Castro here. Another combo from Castro, and Madera gets a left hand into the body. Julio Madera trying to spoil the plans of Mark Castro here in the Fresno native six pro fight. And Castro responding from a knockdown in round number two. That's a good reset round for Castro. Found his legs. Looked like he was moving around pretty well throughout that round. Find a move for his jab as well. I think either way, both these men are going to know they're in a fight tonight. I agree. It did seem like Madera slowed down just a bit. That could have been because of the movement and the jab of Castro, or he could have punched himself out a little bit in that second round. Yeah, I agree. I'm excited to see this next round, just to kind of see what tempo we're gonna we're gonna be looking at. Is it gonna be a little slower pace, faster pace? You know, who has more gas in their tank, right? Did we talk to Mark Castro's head coach and his father, Tony Castro, and we asked. How are you going to know as a coach when your son is ready for a higher caliber opponent? He said he is ready now because it's the way he watches him think before he punches. And it's allowed his punches to become more powerful. We're seeing the higher caliber right, opponent right in front of him, and he's responding to adversity. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's not out of the woods yet. He just took a, a combination from Madera up top to start this round number four. Also, this is only a six-round fight, so that knockdown, that two-point round, carries some weight, is important. Castro's going to have to work double time in order to make up that difference. This is round four, scheduled for six. Madera coming forward. And Alicia Castro sticking with the jab here in round four. As he should, you know, the, the jab is going to, you know, set up a lot of things and, you know, just keep your opponent at bay. You know, realistically, this is either an even fight or Castro could be down. So these last three rounds are going to be very important. There's Madera working the jab right up. Good movement and agility from Castro. And he's tagging Madera. May have hurt with combos based off that agility. Castro still has to be careful, though, because Madera likes to punch with Castro. And he's catching him in between his combinations. Jeb snaps the head of Castro back. Oh, beautiful one-two from Castro right down the middle. Swiped him with the right hand. Oh. Hey, Madero lives up to that name Dodo. He's, he's a tough guy, man. He's strong. He's taking those shots. Mark Castro looking to unload here in round number four. Letting Madera come to him. Got some blood from the nose of Madera now. And strength of those, those jabs and right hands from Castro. Again, both fighters keeping it inside the ring, in the middle of the ring. I think that's that's interesting, kind of showing that you know they still have some gas. They're not going up against the ropes. Yeah, both men don't want to give an inch here. They're holding their ground. Letting their fists fly. Oh, beautiful right hand over the top there. Good timing. 
One thing about Cash that I like, he's throwing more than one punch. So if you know the first one don't land, those the other two are gonna land. So that that's perfect. And I see an adjustment from Castro. He's starting to move his head after his combination, he's changing levels. He's given a little dip after his shots. He's not there for the receipt from Adair after he lands his combination. This fight's so interesting, it's going by so fast yeah. because it's so action-packed. Yeah, these guys, they meet in the center of the ring, they stay there and they trade punches. I'm not complaining. Not at all. Ooh. Good shot there from Mark Castro, firing off the jab. The jab has really been the difference these last couple rounds. Castro's fighting a little more off that back foot using that left jab, setting up his power punches. But Madera keeps coming. Well, when Mark Castro comes out of the corner, he will be doing so to start a fifth round for the first time as a pro. Not gone past the fourth round in any fight up until tonight. And this is when you have to tap in, tap in mentally, right? You know, sometimes coming out as a, as a fresh fighter, you want to get that early knockout. But these later rounds is what counts. It shows what type of fighter you are, how how dig, how you can de dig deep. And um, this is what we're seeing with Chester right now. Absolutely, that you know, his amateur pedigree and his experience is carrying through into the pros. I agree. Castro moving well here at the start of round five, landing some quality shots. Right hand to the body. And Justin, you had, you had alluded to that or mentioned it earlier that Madera only his fifth year of boxing. Looks, looks pretty disciplined to me, yeah. yeah. Looks, looks solid, good technically, good condition. He only previously tumbled to Mexico with a combined opponent record for him, 4-3-3. Three, and three. So a huge step up in class here. Actually, he's coming off a loss back in August. He's hungry for a win. He's been given as good as he's been getting most of the night. Likely a lot more than Mark Castro was expecting here. One thing I will say about Mark Castro and his opponents, he tends to bust up guys' faces. He definitely has pop. He's hitting with those knuckles, doing damage. Not the first opponent who's been a bloody mess after a few rounds of Mark Castro. You see some slight swelling on the forehead of Madera as well. Worked the right hand for Madera. It catches Castro as he's changing levels. I think the different levels of class are starting to show here. Castro has found his rhythm moving well. Offense and defense working seamlessly. Entering tonight, Castro said he believes that he has not been able to showcase some of his footwork, his, his boxing agility, he thought it would be coming in due time. Little did he know he'd be using those tools here tonight. Yeah, he hasn't really had to yet. Tonight he had to. He needs a shot there for Madera. I, I like this fight for Castro because he has to be disciplined. He's got to stay on his toes. He's got to stay on his P's and Q's. Because whenever he makes a mistake, Madera takes advantage of it. I agree. And, I, and again, that transfers into tapping into that mentality to say, hey, I have to I have to be sharp. I can't lose focus. It only takes a few seconds, right? To to get off that game plan. Sometimes less. <laughs> right. Another solid round for Mark Castro. Perhaps starting to separate himself just a little bit from Julio Madera. Yeah, seems to be digging himself out of that hole that he found himself in the second round when he got when he got put down. That right hand shot from Madera at the end of the round. Still to come here on before the bell, Diego Pacheco makes his return to the ring against Gens Plana. 
And then the main card coming up, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific on DAZN. Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, Julio Cesar Martinez, headline at 115 pounds. For the second time in as many shows here in the U.S. this year on the zone, Super Flyweights taking center stage. Last round, gentlemen, keep it nice and close. Let's go. I'm not mad about that either. Those guys throw a ton of punches. They're always in action-packed fights. And you're seeing the best fight the best. We've had good action here in this one. Final round scheduled in a 135-pound battle between Mark Castro and Julio Madera. Good inside shot there from Madera. Came up with a sneaky left uppercut that caught Castro in the chin. Castro comes back with his own right hand over the top. Madera recorded a beautiful left hook that landed on the chin of Castro, sent it to the floor. Back in round number two. The pace was slowed down from Madera in rounds three, four, and five. And here, trying to finish strong against the 17-time national amateur champion. Madera starting this round pretty well. Coming out more aggressive than he has the last few rounds, like I said. The Castro comes right back as well. Listen, stick and move. I would throw those four punch combinations and continue moving in this last round. That's why you're the champ. <laughs> Castro entering this at 5 0, oh, five knockouts. He has not gone the distance yet as a pro. About 90 seconds away from doing so, if he could possibly stop Madera early, though Madera has shown very strong durability. Duro. Duro. Yeah, durable is a good word, um, but also he's strong. Obviously, you saw that in his left hook. Tough. He's, he's staying very disciplined, even for someone with only five years' experience. Hey, either way, I'd like to see this kid again. Castro working the jab, and then moving. What's nice, Castro's able to go back and look at every round to see his mistakes, what he can work on, and you know, this is this is what the program um, continues to show, and how you can be better as an athlete and as a boxer. Beautiful two-punch combo from Castro, the right hand effective here in round six. I like the fact that Castro's been able to self-adjust in these rounds. He had some mistakes going on early, Seems like he corrected those. Hasn't been getting hit quite as much. Took back control. Good learning experience. And that's important, self-adjusting. That that tells me that he knows something, right? Oh, absolutely. His father said that, you know, he, he's a thinker in there. He sees his son thinking, so. Hey, good left hook again from Madera at the end of the round. Slugging it all the way through. Mark Castro goes the distance for the first time as a pro. Perhaps overcomes adversity as well with that second round knockdown. An impressive performance from both ends. For Castro, up until tonight as a professional, what stood out was the flawless performances that he had. He was maybe making quick work of his opponents, but he was doing it so fundamentally sound that you really couldn't pick apart the, opponent, the, the, the performances. Here, you taste a little adversity. You want to see how they respond. Did pretty well. Yeah, I, I spoke to Mark's manager, uh, Keith Connolly, and he was saying that they need rounds. They need guys that are going to be there. They need rounds. Well, they got it. They got almost more than they could chew, but I think Mark handled it very well. Uh, I do believe he's going to pull out this decision, but we got to see him go through that adversity, adversity self-adjust, figure a guy out. I think this is going to make him a better fighter. Yeah, and like you mentioned, rounds, right? You can get as many rounds in sparring, but when it comes to fighting, it's so different. And so, again, that tells you so much about what you can do and what you can do better. Absolutely. Great point. So Castro hoping to pick up his first victory via a decision here in San Diego. Family and friends in attendance. 
the Mexican flag for his mother, the El Salvadorian flag for his father. Castro awaits the decision. We go to David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of action here in San Diego, we go to the judges' score totals. David Sullivan, Chris Migliori, and Fernando Villarreal all scored about identically, 58 to 55. All for your winner by unanimous decision. He's still undefeated, Mark Castro.